大家好，欢迎收看本期的世界图书馆馆长访谈。本次我们邀请到的是毛里求斯国家图书馆理事会主席安杜尔德·巴桑先生与馆长拉莫斯女士。因为我此前在毛里求斯中国文化中心工作过一年，所以本次访谈由我来担任主持。毛里求斯是一个非洲岛国。位于非洲大陆以东的南印度洋上，毛里求斯国土总面积两千零四十平方公里，差不多相当于八分之一个北京。虽然毛里求斯的国土面积有限，但是，一百九十万平方公里的海洋专属经济区，使毛里求斯成为一个名副其实的海洋大国。毛里求斯原本是一个无人岛，十六世纪初。葡萄牙航海家们首先发现了这里。接下来的几百年间，荷兰人、法国人和英国人又相继登岛，直到一九六八年三月十二日，毛里求斯宣告独立，脱离了英国长达一百五十年的统治。毛里求斯今天依然是英联邦中的一员，其官方语言是英语，但是法语的使用却更为普遍。毛国居民日常使用的口语则是克里奥语，是用法语的词汇与非洲的语法结合而成的一种简化的法语。近年来，随着毛里求斯本土文化的一再兴起，也有一些人主张将这种口语当作母语进行标准化与官方化。多样的民族构成形成了毛里求斯多元包容的文化氛围。我们在毛里求斯随处可见修建于不同历史时期的寺庙、教堂，从路易港现代化的码头、时尚的购物中心，到始建于1844年的中心大市场，再到华人聚居的唐人街，我们更能体验到的是一种穿越时空的历史感。说到毛里求斯国家图书馆，该馆始建于1996年。二零零零年底才开始向公众正式开放，现有馆员二十八人，尚没有独立的馆舍。但是，麻雀虽小，五脏俱全，毛里求斯国家图书馆具有完备的理事会制度，包括理事会主席在内的十一位成员均由部长任命。毛里求斯国家图书馆的馆藏很有特色。他们保存着始自1777年的殖民时期的文件和报纸。此外，毛里求斯的国家图书馆还收藏有大量的海洋及气候资料。毛里求斯国家图书馆与中国国家图书馆的交往由来已久，想必这与前一任国家图书馆馆长是位华裔有关。毛里求斯国家图书馆。在其有限的场馆中，专门设有“上海之窗”与“中国图书馆角”。二零一二年，中国国家图书馆与毛里求斯国家图书馆正式建立了图书交换关系。二零一四年，两国国家图书馆又正式签署了合作备忘录。在备忘录的指导下，两国国家图书馆近年来在人员互访以及业务合作方面。进行了频繁的往来。二零一六年八月五日，中国国家图书馆馆长韩永进在国家图书馆红厅会见了来访的毛里求斯国家图书馆理事会主席安杜尔德·巴桑先生与馆长拉莫斯女士。借此机会，我们也对二位进行了一个采访。Dear Chairman and the Director, welcome to National Library of China. And first of all. Mm, we, I'd like to ask the, the chairman, could you please introduce the board of the National Library of Mauritius and the relationship between the board and the library? Please. Thank you. The National Library of Mauritius was created by an act passed in Parliament. So the National Library operates uh, under a board comprising of 11 members appointed by the minister, 11 members including the chairman myself, appointed by the minister after approval from the cabinet of ministers. The board exists only for policy decisions that, that guide the National Library. 
in the day-to-day -day administration of the National Library is uh, with the director and his staff. We are here only for policy issues. So the second one, uh, director, mm. welcome to our Thank library. You. You know. yes. Every time we met in your library and it's my place. <laughs> So, could you please introduce the National Library of Mauritius, um, including the characteristic collection of the National Library of Mauritius? Uh, like the chairman said, the act was passed in 1996, but the library came into operation only in December 1999, and we opened to the public December 2000, which you see it's quite recent. Uh, by the end of March uh, this year, we had some 590,000 collection. And most of our collection, we get them by legal deposit. Okay, so all the publications local, you have to come and deposit six copies. And then we do purchase and we get some as donations and gifts. Uh, the characteristic, most of the collection of the National Library comprise of books. But the richest collection are those of the newspapers, which date to 200 and 300 years back. So some are in good condition, but some are on, in bad conditions. So this is like this is the richest collection of uh, the National Library. Thank you. So for China, um, as far as the library community is concerned, uh, could you introduce the current policy uh, of Mauritius and? Uh, uh, will you make some change in your term? The, the current policy of the National Library is to be a body representing the national heritage of Mauritius. We have a system by legal deposit, all publication, be it newspapers, magazine, catalog, all these publishers, they are bound by law to deposit legally at least, uh, I do think it's six copies for the mm -hmm. time being. So, what we intend to do is to preserve, restore for the future generation. Because uh, we, we have to, to make a differentiation between a national public library and a, a national library and a public library. Public library is open to anybody. They can come and lend book, go home, return it after a certain date. But the National Library is more a reference library. You come there, you get all the information, all documents dating from the year 1700. Mm -hmm. We preserve it. We read some, some are in uh, a bad shape. We have to restore them. And we have sufficient staff. Whenever people come there, they come, they uh, get uh, the information through the assistance of the staff over there. What I intend to do by my term, which is a term of three years as chairman of the board, is firstly, we discuss this with the director of the National Library of China. The, the space, we lack space over there. We, we are in an old building. We are in the process of constructing a new building, move from there gives the opportunity to people to come in a more spacious building and we, for the staff, they will get, get a better environment to work. And with this, I do think that we shall be in a better position to restore and preserve our document, which is a treasure for us. It's a national heritage. In the next year, in, in the next 10 years, uh, what challenge uh, National Library of Mauritius uh, will face, and uh, what response will you take? We have to accept it. We are living in a fast-moving uh, era. Okay. As the director just uh, mentioned, that with the uh, project of a new building, we shall be bound to go to digitization because it, preserving our documents dating from 1700 is a big challenge. We are here on a visit, uh, of an, on an official visit, just to see what's happening in the National Library of China. You are well, in, well advanced uh, in so far as Mauritius is concerned. 
We have not started the digitization process in the National Library. I do think in 10 years' time, it will be a reality with a new building, a new service given to the public, a more uh, a better environment for the staff, more spacious, and we shall be in a position to uh, give a full service on the digitization process. Uh, for director, uh, what do you think of the uh, profession of librarian and uh, how to evaluate the responsibility of librarian in the new period, you know, nowadays? Uh, what training do you provide the librarian of uh, your library? Anyway, you've been in Manchester, you know, a bit. I should say, uh, I mean, since independence, we've come a long way. We've come a long way in the library profession, but there's still a lot more to do. As far as uh, training is concerned, I can tell you I've been behind the University of Mauritius to start a basic training, which was certificate and diploma. And now with the Open University, we also give uh, distance by distance uh, degree course. So thanks to the degree course, last year we had some hundred students who passed the BA in library science. So it's already a good sign. But in schools, I suppose we have more to improve as far as the library profession is concerned. Uh, it, it, it's a bit lacking over there. But then, of course, with public libraries and national libraries always taking professionals. So now things are changing. But as I say, it doesn't stop over here. I suppose in digital and technology, the librarians have to be uh, trained uh, for, for a further uh, step. Uh, so that's it. And, uh, you know, we also have a council which uh, engroups all the professional librarians. And uh, through this council, at least twice per year, we do give training to all the library professionals. We also go to our island, uh, Rodrig, over there also we do give training. So we do, we do what is possible. Mm. Director, uh, in China, it is said, uh, books are steps toward human uh, progress. So in Mauritius, what are the relation between books and people's life? Uh, uh, what service and idea do you have in your reading promotion? Okay, um, books and people, I think it's everywhere in the world, it's linked. I mean, you can see someone who reads a lot, what type of, and you can see someone, you, you know, that hasn't been reading. For me, reading, I don't mind whether it is printed or ebook. Eh? For me, as long as people are reading, I suppose they are gaining. There's no book which you read and you say, I haven't learned anything. In anything which you read, you always get something new, isn't it? So for me, I think books and people have, if now we visited those centuries things, so people and books have always had a close link for invention and discoveries and anything you name it. I think today with civilization also, if we are advanced, it's thanks to what's been written earlier and we are progressing on that. So, as I say, in any type of profession, I think we, we need to read. Eh? We need to read, whether, like I said, books, newspapers, magazines. Like uh, any library, I suppose people should realize all the services we give are free, isn't it? Very rarely you go in a hotel, you pay for each service, right? You go in a restaurant, anywhere. But if you see libraries, we give more services freely. So we want to encourage people to come and read, isn't it? We want to disseminate and share all the information which we have. So it's for the people now to see this opportunity and come over to the library. Now, as far as National Library of Mauritius is concerned, due to space problem, so there are many things which right now we cannot offer. Eh? Like I say, public reading corner I mean, or public lending service, uh, I wanted to have a full reading section, you know, only for the dailies, which we cannot do to space problem. Now because of parking problem, but in the near future with the coming of our new building, we tend to uh, develop more services, huh? more services, a computer room. Okay, so at the end of the interview, um, I'd like to ask uh, to uh, chairman and director, uh, could you describe the library in your heart, uh, or the imaginary mm, appearance of a library? Chairman, um, first. 
Library in my heart. Okay, that's uh, a very good question again. We, you know, the National Library of Mauritius, when it was passed in Parliament, as a national heritage, as a national intellectual heritage for the future generation. We have everything over there. Papers, magazines, especially books written by the Mauritian uh, authors and so on. Now the director writing for Ted House. We have a problem of space. We have a problem of conservation. We have to learn how to preserve for a longer period. Oh, what your, your question, the library of my heart is to move as far as possible into that new building to create that national library, to preserve uh, our culture, cultural heritage, intellectual heritage, and uh, all the uh, Mauritian, the book written by the Mauritian uh, author, and go digital and offer a better service to the public in a better environment. Okay, thank you. And the well, for me, I can say since 25 years I've been a librarian. So I started in a public librarian, today I'm at the National Library. So, and I visited also many libraries in the world. I, I always quote as an example, I think a library should be like a market, you know, where you have a lot of crowd coming, people of all ages, you know, adults buying their whatever they like, children, you know, uh, because they, they always feel deprived. So my dream is also having a section for the partially blind and for children of, you know, autism. So, and try to, you know, give them a corner also where they can develop. Uh, okay, a market in a paradise. <laughs> market mm -hmm. like, uh, let's say, like Las Vegas, but with a crowd like in Beijing. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, Thank you very much for giving us this opportunity to share our views with you. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 在采访的最后，已经有二十五年图书馆工作经验的拉莫斯馆长告诉我们，他心目中的图书馆应该像一个市场，人来人往，有老人，有孩子，有各种各样的人。而主席先生则憧憬着未来那幢新建的图书馆大楼。马格吐温在《赤道环游记》中有两篇关于毛里求斯的游记，其中有这样一段话，他说。世界上只有这一个地方，出来的人不会被问到你喜欢这里吗？当地人会主动告诉你，上帝当初是先建造了毛里求斯，然后才按照毛里求斯的样子建造了天堂。近年来，随着中毛两国日益密切的交往，特别是2013年10月31日，中毛两国签署的互免签证协议正式生效，越来越多的中国人。了解和熟悉了毛里求斯这个遥远且美丽的国度，相信在未来的日子里，中毛两国国家图书馆会不断地探寻新的合作契机，为中毛两国文化交流做出不懈的努力。谢谢大家收看，下期再见。